to socialize. Socialize. Hanging out with us on the black couch. Yes. We are on chapter number seven. Seven. On a boy called Christmas. Love it. So we should summarize the first six chapters and where we're at so far. What characters have we met? We've met and Nicholas. Nicholas. Joel, Joel, his dad. Anders. Anders the hunter. And Carlotta. Car Carlotta. Like Carl. Or you know, and oh, hold let me this is I just thought of this. Carlotta can be Car. And Lotta. Carrington is Car. Car is Lotta. Carlotta. Or Car the producer. Car uh, and and Karen. Karen. <laughs> she is and a Karen. Karen. That is so true. Now listen. Oh, we I forgetting one Mika. Mika yeah. The mouse. So we're on chapter seven. Let's roll. Rumbling stomachs and other nightmares. Wow. I'll start first. Nicholas slept outside all summer. He spent every day as Aunt Carlotta. Carlotta. Oh, I meant Karen <laughs> told him to do. Looking for food. From first light until nightfall, one day, he saw the bear again. Again? The bear stood up upright. But, but Nicholas waited. Wow. Stayed calm. Stay calm. Be the forest. Be the forest. Because the bear was going to go, be the forest. Like the, the, ba the bear stood there, peaceful and terrifying all at once. The bear that had chased his mother towards the well, he couldn't hate this creature. High five. Is it the same bear that maybe killed his mom? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, but... <clears throat> Look at me! Look at know? me, said Nicholas. I'm skinny as a... T I miss... I'm skinny as a rake. No meat on my bones. The bear seemed to agree and ambled away on all fours. Was there an unluckier boy in the world? Yes, actually, there was. There was a boy called Gatu. Who lived in Goodbye. India? Who'd been who'd been struck by lightning while going to the toilet in a stream. Very nasty. Even so, it was a miserable, joyless time for Nicholas. High five! I can't see High your five. face. See, I can't see your face. High five! <laughs> Put your knees down. Aunt Carlotta was never happy with the mushrooms and herbs he managed to find. Only, the only real comfort, a part. A what? A part. From Mika was in counting down the days and weeks and months till his father returned. Which he did by scratching lines in the nearest pine, tree pine. To the, the cottage. cottage. High five. High Two five. months. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Two months passed, then free. Where, Where are, are you? you? He asked. In the trees. The only sound that came back to him was the wind or distant woodpecker. And Carlotta came nastier with the day. The vinegar getting more sour. She screamed at him for nothing. Stop, Stop that! And Kara, Car, Lotta. No, Car and <laughs> one evening, as she ate the soup, he had made her. Yeah, he had or made I'll for her. Feed you or to I'll feed you to the bear. Feed you to the bear. Remember, she talks like with Stop her. Stop what? She talk, remember, she talks with her mouth like a circle. Oh, I'll feed you to the bear. She makes a circle with her lips. 
or I'll feed you to the bear. Stop what? Those horrible noises from inside your head, the stuffing body. Nicholas was confused. The only way to stop a rumbling skirmish was by eating. As with mumps, most days he only found enough munching to work Aunt Carla. High five. Car and high five. Aunt Carlotta. High five. My turn. High five. Carla <laughs> <laughs> smiled. A smile. Her face was an unusually unusual thing to see, like a banana in the snow. All right. You can have some. All right. You can have some too. Oh, thank you, Aunt Caron. I'm so hungry, and I love mushroom soup. High five. High five. <laughs> Do I not get to read? High five. No, I'm not high fiving you back. I want to read. <laughs> okay, you clap my hand. You clap my hand. You clap my hand. <laughs> Aunt Carlotta shook her head. As you always make me soup, I thought I would reply the favor. I would repay the favor. So, while you were out in the forest, I made some soup especially for you. Mika was looking through the window. Don't eat it! Don't eat it! He squeaked pointlessly. Nicholas looked worried as he stared down at the murky gray-brown liquid. What is it made with? He asked. Love, said Aunt Carlotta. Nicholas knew she had been joking. Aunt Carlotta couldn't love any more than an icicle could love. That's a bit unfair to icicles. Icicles melt. Aunt Carlotta was a frozen, as frozen, as frozen thing that was very frozen and would never melt. Go on then. Eat it. It was the most disgusting thing he had ever tasted. It was like eating mud and dirt and puddle water. But he could feel Aunt Carlotta watching him, so he kept eating. Aunt Carlotta, cold gray eyes, made Nicholas feel a hundred times smaller than he was, as she said for what seemed like a hundred times, your father is foolish. Nicholas didn't answer her back. He just kept sipping the foul soup, feeling more and more sick. But Aunt Carlotta wasn't going to leave it there. Everybody knows there are no such things as elves, she said, spitting as she spoke. Your father is a stupid, ignorant child to believe such things. I'd be very surprised if he's still alive. No one has ever been to the far north and returned to tell the tale. I was so stupid coming here, waiting for five hundred rubles that will never arrive. You can always go home. Oh no, I can't now. It's October. The weather has turned. I can't talk ten miles in this weather can't walk can't walk 10 miles in this weather she'll talk while she walks i'm here all winter now for christmas not that christmas means anything to me it's a hateful time of year she's very scroogey this was just too much christmas is great nicholas said i love christmas and i don't even care that it clashes with my birthday he was going to say, the only thing that spoils Christmas is you, but he thought better of it. Aunt Carlotta seemed genuinely confused. How can you, a grubby, dirty, motherless boy, love Christmas? If you were rich merchant, son of Turku, or Helsinki, then I could understand it. But my brother has always been too poor to buy you a present. Nicholas felt a reddish flush of anger tingle his skin. It was always magical, and I remember I would rather a toy that was made of love than one that cost a lot of money. But the only thing he ever made you was a sleigh. 
He was always too busy working. Nicholas thought of his old turnip doll and wondered where it was. It wasn't beside the door where he had left it. Your father is a liar. No, said Nicholas. He was finished the soup, but now felt extremely ill. He promised you'd come. He promised you he'd come back. He told you that elves were real. Two lies right there. Anyway, I'm tired now, said Anne. It's time for my bed. So now you've finished your soup. If you could kindly get me out of my sight, get out of my sight, that would make me as happy as Queen of Finland. This is my house now. I'm your guardian, so I'd start doing exactly what I say, exactly as I say it. Get out, go. Nicholas stood up, his stomach aching. He looked around the room. Where is my turnip doll? Aunt Carlotta smiled. It was a proper smile, and one that was soon turning into a laugh. Oh, my God, don't tell me. Do you know what she did? Aunt Carlotta smiled. You've just eaten him. What? It took a second. No two seconds. Maybe three. Three and a half. Actually, no, just three. But then Nicholas realized what she had just said his only toy in the world was now in his stomach he ran outside and threw up in the toilet hole why did you do that he asked in disbelief from outside my mom made that well she's no longer here is she said aunt carlotta though through the small window which she had opened to get a better view of Nicholas being sick. Thank the Lord. Used to give me a headache listening to her bad singing all day. I just thought it was about time you should grow up and leave silly toys behind. Nicholas had finished. He went back inside. He thought of his mother. He thought of holding onto the chain that had held the bucket as she tried to escape the bear. How dare Aunt Carlotta say nasty things about her? There was only one option now, to run away. He could not stay here with Aunt Carlotta. He would prove his father wasn't a liar. And there was only one way to do it. Goodbye, Aunt Carlotta, he said, just a whisper. So actually, he said it like this. Under his breath, he whispered, but he meant it. He was going. He was going to find his father. He was going to see the elves. He was going to make everything all right. Oh, my God. Look, the eyes of the turnip doll as he cooked it and fed it to him. Is that the meanest thing you've ever heard? Yes. Does that make you upset? Yes, absolutely. Hey, check that out. Check that out. Oh my god, look at that. He cooked the turnip doll. She cooked. No, it wasn't. He fed it to car to to Nicholas. So Nicholas is taking off. Oh my gosh. So what do you think about that chapter? That is the defining chapter right there. That's the moment that he realized. Either I stay with this wretched, mean old lady, or I take a risk and I go find my dad, my papa. And what did he choose? I know a good name for her now. What? Aunt Karen Alta. <laughs> or Aunt Karen Aunt Karen. Alta here. <laughs> Aunt Karen out of here. <laughs> Aunt Karen, I'm out of here. <laughs> Aunt Carl, Aunt Carlotta, I'm out of here. Yes, so that is it for this chapter. Comment down below. Tell us what you liked about this chapter and what you despised about this chapter. Thumbs up. 
thumbs down. Let or us know. Or thumbs sideways. Or thumbs sideways. Smash the like button. Ready? All Join your it. ornaments. Join it.